Hey boys and girls, welcome into Guest Blade episode number 27 and one that I am beyond excited to bring you. You know, it's almost like each episode gets a little better and a little better and I don't think I've really had more than one or two that I wasn't thoroughly excited about. This one is, is actually pretty special because this is a knife <laughs> I was actually going to buy and it was it was Dwayne over at edcknives.com that had this and I was kind of in that mode of I'm sticking money back for the New York show and I really don't want to spend a lot of money and I kind of hemmed and hawed and went back and forth with him on it and I ended up passing on it and I really honestly truly am kicking myself in the ass for not doing it for not committing this is one of the most beautiful knives that I've ever handled at any price range, period. Uh, I want to give a thank you to Jared who sent this out. For those of you that are on Instagram, you can follow him at uh, jwalters34 and see the pictures that he's taken of this uh, beautiful beast. Um, I'm not the only person that's, that's handled this. I talked to another friend of mine uh, that had also handled it around the time of the Blade Show. And I forget if it was him or me, but during our text conversation about it, uh, one of us had called it the Green Monster, and it's kind of stuck with us. This is a Sal Monero bullseye with his true arrow grind. Now, you guys may remember I had done a review of the Boker variation of a bullseye grip, and I hated it. I loved the idea of the beauty of the grind, but the execution by Boker was shit. This is a true full custom from Sal that is, in a word, astounding. There are very few knives that can rival the quality of this for anywhere near the price range. <laughs> I don't even know where to begin, to be perfectly honest with you. You guys know that I despise thumb discs. Don't care on this one, because it, it's the perfect reach for me. I don't have an issue getting to it. And it flips open nicely. Now, it's not a lightning fast opener because it's, it's an extraordinarily smooth action. Very silky smooth on this. So let's start with taking a look at the frame, the scales and the frame. So what we have here is a titanium frame knife with titanium scale overlays that he is anodized green. And it's a beautiful green, too. There's some really solid millwork in here. Great finish. Kind of has an eggshell finish, a very fine eggshell finish, which gives it almost a sparkling property when you get it out in direct light, especially in sunlight. I love the color shift because it does bring out some, in the right light, it brings out some gold. And then you have your titanium frame, which is left in a natural color of titanium to give you some contrast. And that also has the same matte finish. That's that very fine eggshell finish. And then you get to his legendary backspacer. These are all hand checkered by Sal. You know, this is like buying into a $5,000 hand-built custom 1911. And you get that very fine checkering done on the front strap, maybe around the trigger guard. This is the same degree of craftsmanship, and it's all done by hand filing. And it feels great. It's grippy without being painful. And there's a fine line between the two. Then you've got a beautifully sculpted 3D titanium pocket clip that not only flows with the shape of the knife, as it should, but you'll notice the milling that's been done on this completely separate piece that matches up perfectly to the scale that it's screwed onto. This is what I'm always talking about when I'm talking about full-on custom knives. You go over 400 bucks, this is the kind of clip I would expect that matches the knife. It looks like it was designed for the knife, that it wasn't an afterthought. More checkering here on the thumb disc, on the top, and on the sides. has a nice sharpness to it, by the way. There is his maker's mark, 
and on the other side the blade steel CPM 154 good premium quality steel this thing is just breathtaking yeah I am I'm actually I actually when I opened the box I actually was pissed at myself for not having bought this and I'm really happy for Jared and I'm glad that he's enjoying it and yeah I've already uh, offered him money and trades and everything else and he's like nope I love it too much to ever give it up but if I ever do you got dibs Don't, I'll, I'll remember you said that look at this grind Look how pronounced that arrow is. This is one of the most beautiful compound grinds that I've ever seen. And he made this thing ridiculously sharp, by the way. This is not just for show. It is very, very sharp. And it's got a beautiful hand rub satin all the way through. What you've got here is a showpiece that you want to carry. Now, what I was surprised about was the thickness of this knife, because it always looked to be fairly slim to me in pictures. It feels so good in the hand between you've got a, a decent thickness to the titanium frame, nice thickness on each of the scales, and it fills up the hand wonderfully. The jumping up here is pretty severe. It's, it's almost like putting your fingers down or your thumb down on spikes. It, it, it's a little severe for my liking, but I don't care. I still want to rock this knife. I want to rock it hard. Ugh. And it is so smooth to open and close this action. It makes a Sabenza feel like a handful of gravel. It is just that freaking smooth. This is what a dream knife should be. Now, Sal's been in the game for a long time. He's been making knives for a long time. And unfortunately, a lot of people didn't really start hearing about him until the past few years. And there are still plenty of people that haven't. You know, I don't think that his books are open. I don't think that you're going to get an order in with him. But if you ever come across a Monero in real life, available anywhere, freaking buy it, man. Oh, jeez. The build quality on this is superb. The feeling of it in the hand, from the texturing, the finishing that's been done on the surfaces, to the, the feel of all of the, uh, the mill work that's been done and very finely refined after that, to the hand checkering on the back spacer, to the contoured clip, to the way that he's contoured everything to fit perfectly in the hand, it just works. And that was exactly why I wanted to buy it. I wanted to buy it to carry it and use it. And you guys know I'm like that with all my knives, but this was going to be one that would just pretty much live in my pocket. I have a couple of knives in my collection right now that when I don't know what I want to carry, I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time trying to figure it out. There's a couple that are just my go-tos that I will always just grab. I have an Alishowitz for that purpose. Uh, my Kawayback is one of those knives. And, you know, I, I've got a handful that I just go, I'm just going to carry this today and I'll be in love with it all day. And I love to cut things with them and I love to feel them in my pocket. I love to pull them out and show them to people. And this is one of those knives that would do all that. A lot of people don't like a recurve. I love them. I more than like, I love them. It's got a sexy feel to it. And this is like... This is like the fender on a Ferrari. It's just got this beautiful hump to it, this beautiful shape. Then you get again, you get to that arrow grind. I mean, you can feel it. It's so pronounced. And this is not a tremendously thick blade stock when you think about it. But everything was just done to a certain degree of perfection that I think outshines his price point. 
even the secondary market on these, you're going to pay in the range of sixteen to eighteen hundred dollars for the secondary market. Worth that and beyond, in my personal opinion. And I don't say that often. There are not a lot of knives out there that are worth even their secondary market uh, values at any given time. But certainly, uh, very few, uh, much fewer, are worth it uh, to say that they're worth beyond that secondary market value. This is easily a $2,000 knife, just in the construction, the amount of time that's gone into it, the design, which it, sometimes people just tend to overlook that. And it's not about the design as far as, oh, it's got cool lines in it and it's got the arrow grind. I mean the design. The way these handles were made to fit the hand. The way that the shape, the flowing shape of the lines of the actual knife, not the mill lines, but the lines of the knife, complement and accent the lines of this blade. This is not a straight spine. It's a continual radius going all the way down to the tip and then the way that it sweeps back and it just meets up with the rest of the lines of the knife this was not something drawn on the back of a cocktail napkin and you just went okay I'm gonna do that <laughs> it talks like that um, this is something that I could tell that he has gone back and forth and back and forth and he's probably gone through a, a few prototypes to make it this perfect as well now, I had never seen a bullseye without the telltale uh, crosshairs at the pivot, but this is a bullseye. I want to be clear on that. This is a bullseye. <laughs> and I'm used to seeing his signature crosshairs around the pivot. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just Google Monaro bullseye and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, I know the grip doesn't have it either. The grip is the one that has all that crosshatch pattern done in the uh, scales. That doesn't have it either. But I don't know. I, I just I had never seen if there was room at the pivot. I have not seen one that didn't have it on there. And I guess he felt it would take away from the beauty of the rest of it. But whatever the reasoning, it doesn't matter. This knife is just flawless perfection. And I hope that you come back to my channel in a year. And this is in a ton of my videos because it ends up in my collection. I hope that either Jared gets bored with it, or, with it, or he ends up too scared to carry it, or he finds some other great grail and he's got to sell this to finance it. I hope something happens that's not a bad thing, of course, and that I'm able to swoop in and, and take advantage of it because this thing is magnificent. And the thing is, I, I'm not a green guy. I don't like green. Now that I've got my Graham Razel with the green uh, Zirka tie, I've kind of changed a little bit on that. And I think this tone of green is sexy. It's not a bright screaming green, which I would have figured if I was going to go green, I'd want to go that way. This is almost a, uh, a toxic green. Kind of in between an olive and a toxic green. It just looks beautiful. And it's got a degree of uniqueness to it. I mean, how many all-green knives do you see? There's not that many out there. It's hard not to... It's hard to sit here and touch it and not fall in love with it. That's what she said. It's hard to display this piece and feel the action and play with it in your hands and not be madly in love. So if you've ever looked at the pictures or somebody's videos and seen these knives and went, you know, I don't get it. I don't get what the big deal is. It looks okay, but I don't know if I would spend $1,000, $1,200, $1,500. You need to put one in your hands. And if you have the inclination to buy very fine quality knives, then you're going to want this. Period. I can't stop staring at it. That's what she said. I can't resist the uncontrollable urge to play with it. But I do have to put it down. I do have to put it back in its pouch. And I do have to send it back to Jared. As much as I don't want to. This is one that was a true, it was a true pleasure to come out here with and to share with all of you. 
because it's knives like this that birthed this series on my channel. Knives that the majority of us will never get to own, never get to see in real life. And to get to experience this together in a safe place. <laughs> to see it in full HD. It's still astounding to me how many people out there feel the need to sit down and make a YouTube video. And they'll have a $2,000 knife in their hands. And have a, a table full of $2,000, $5,000 knives. And they'll do it with their friggin' cell phone. <laughs> Why? You obviously got the money and you have the inclination to, to, to sit down and make the video. Do it in full HD so all the rest of us can enjoy it. Because I've seen some damn amazing knives on YouTube that I have just cursed at that little option right down there where I couldn't go above 480. There are some that are at 240 and it kills me. So that's why this series was birthed so that you could get a chance and I could get a chance to see these up close and personal. Here's some views, here are my thoughts on it. You could mute it, doesn't really matter. And see the beauty of these knives in 3D, in full HD. Well, not in 3D, but you know what I mean, not laying on a table on a picture. Good Lord. There you have it, guys. If I had a nit to pick with this knife, it would only be that, yeah, I'm, not, I'm still not a fan of thumb discs. But that's fine. Like I said, on this knife, I can reach just fine. But if I had one nit to pick, uh, it would be that it doesn't have a spot for a lanyard. Whether you are or are not a lanyard person, the maker doesn't know that. They should always give you that option where... You know, and I'm a lanyard person on certain knives and not on other knives. It's it's once I've carried it in the pocket and I feel it and I feel how it deploys, I decide if I'm going to have a lanyard on it or not. I want to be able to have that option. And honestly, for this kind of money and the obvious skill that he's got, I would have expected a custom pivot. But that's it. That's if that's the most severe thing you can say about this knife. You know it's just nitpicking. Neither one of those are a reason to go, I wanted it, but now screw you, man. I'm out of here. Taking my money with me. No. It's a fantastic knife in every possible respect. It's a little heavy. I mean, there's, there's a lot of material here. It's definitely a good six, six and a half ounce knife. I just got finished doing the video on the, uh, the Birch Tangent. I don't know how far apart these uploads are going to be, but I just got finished handling it a few minutes ago. And damn, if this isn't nearly as heavy as that monster birch was. But it feels, it feels very solid and very tough and very secure. Something that, you know, yeah, sure, it's a beautiful showpiece. But I wouldn't have a problem uh, putting my life in its hands. No way. All right, boys and girls, I'm going to cut it off here and let you go. I'm going to try to squeeze out a few more videos in this next week if I'm able to. I really hope that I can because I have some really special pieces on the way, too, from Dave Curtis directly. Um, one is his first BMF in years. I'm going to get a chance to show the world this amazing monster of a knife. So I'm going to go for now. Thank you guys for watching and subscribing and clicking like and sharing it with your friends. It really does mean a lot to me. Uh, I noticed my channel, my subscribers has grown even more. And I honestly, I can't find a way to thank you guys enough. So again, thank you. And I will do my very best to try to always upload quality uh, content for you and bring exciting knives, not just, listen, I get a lot of people saying, why don't you do more production knives? Because they're not as freaking exciting that you could go. If you want to hear about a Spyderco Domino, there are going to be 30 different people on YouTube. That's got a great video for you. And you know what? You can go to pretty much any knife store local to you and pick one up. What I try to do is bring you stuff that nobody else can bring you. 
to do things on camera that you don't normally get a chance to see. Uh, do I still have a love for certain production knives? Sure. I've even bought a couple in the past, uh, you know, year. I don't make a big deal about it because, well, anybody could be showing you those videos. How many times are you going to get a chance to see something like this? Or a Birch? Or a Rexford Epicenter? Or a Wolverine? I mean, look at some of the stuff that people have been generous enough to donate to this cause. And the knives that I personally own, because I try to buy things that are different and unique as well. So... Yeah, when it comes to it, time from time to time, I will come out here with a production knife every now and then. But I want to try to keep the content unique and fresh if I can. And it's my way of thanking you guys for subscribing and being here. All right, I will see you guys on the next video.